talk a little bit about that this morning. And we're going to look at a very, very familiar story. Uh, it's told in three different Gospels, but we're going to we're going to look at the one in Mark. It's Mark chapter 5, uh, beginning at verse 25. And while you're looking that up, I want to say something else. Uh, you know, Jimmy, when he was up here earlier, said that, you know, if you're here today and, and you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you know, uh, you're in the right place, number one. Uh, but... I want to make sure that everybody knows, and, and, and hopefully you do already, but just in case you don't, uh, if you're ever, whether you're here or you're not here, if you're ever feeling like you need to pray and you would like somebody to pray with you, you know, you can accept Jesus Christ. He'll meet you anywhere. Anywhere. And if you ever find yourself in that position, or, or, or somebody else, there's bulletins at both entrances, and at the bottom of the bulletin, on the second page, is my phone number at the parsonage, my cell phone number, my email address, I'm also on Facebook, Facebook Messenger, I would be glad to come and pray with anybody. So, uh, if you don't know Jesus... We're going to talk a little bit about that today. You need to experience his touch because there's nothing, nothing you've ever felt like it. Amen? So Mark, chapter 5, beginning at verse 25. So now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say, Who touched me? And he looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you so much today, Lord. We thank you for, for all that we have and all that we are, Lord. Lord, we thank you for, for sending your Spirit to our, our service to meet with us here today, Lord. Lord, we just pray that we be obedient and, and follow your Spirit wherever it leads, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your Son who went and died on the cross so that each of us could hear those very same words. Son or daughter, your faith has made you well. Lord, we thank you for that this morning. Lord, Lord we just pray that, that your will be done in this service. And Lord, again, we pray that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be found pleasing in your sight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I've already said, this story is a, a very familiar story. Isn't it? It's a story that's told uh, in three of the four Gospels. You can read the very same story in Matthew chapter 9 and in Luke chapter 8. And I think it's written in three of the four Gospels because it's just that important of a story, isn't it? How important is touch? Turns out touch is, is a lot more important than a lot of people believe. How important is touch with a baby? very important, isn't it? There was a study conducted in 2017, and the results of that study were recorded in Development of Psychopathology, and this study involved 94 healthy children in British Columbia. And in this study, 
the parents of five-week-old babies were asked to keep a diary of their infant's behavior. You know, everything, every time they slept, everything they ate, ate, every time they were fussy, every time they were happy, everything about these infants' behavior. And along with that, they also had to leave an account of the caregiving that involved bodily contact. Well, fast forward about four and a half years, those very same children, now four and a half years old, their DNA was sampled by swabbing inside their cheeks. And these, these scientists examined the biomechanical modification called DNA methylation, in which some part of the chromosomes are tagged with small molecules made of carbon and hydrogen, all right? And these molecules help control how active the genes are in these babies and thus affect how the cells function. Well, scientists found consistent differences between high contact and low contact children in five different DNA sites. And two of those sites fall within genes. One of those plays a role in the immune system, and the other one is involved in metabolism. So simply put, with all those words that I didn't even know what meant until I was studying this the other day, all right? People have always known that physical contact or touch helps babies develop quicker socially, right? But this experiment also proved that touch has an effect on physical growth and health of a baby as well. Touch is important. From day one, touch is important. The quicker that baby is placed in its mother's arm, the better chance that baby has, amen? But touch is not just important for babies, is it? As we grow, touch still is important to us, isn't it? If for nothing else, touch becomes a way of communication, doesn't it? How many of y'all believe that? Touch is a form of communication, right? If you don't believe it, watch uh, watch a young girl or a young woman who's talking to a young man. And she keeps flipping her hair. She's communicating something, ain't she? Or what about when you're, you're sitting in a church pew and, and you're really close to the person beside you and you feel an elbow or a hip? They're communicating something, aren't they? Move over, give me some room. So sometimes when somebody's worried, touch can become a form of communication too, can it? Sometimes you can touch them in such a way that they, they can feel comfort, that they can feel that this too shall pass. They can feel just from that touch that, that things are going to be okay. Now, a lot of people think that communication is only done through words, but, but there's so many other ways to communicate, isn't there? I mean, as a matter of fact, today in the texting age, words are probably the least effective way of communicating because when you're reading a text, there's no inflection, there's no facial expression, there's no, you don't know when somebody, when you send something to somebody and you just get a K back, you don't know if that K meant okay or if it just means okay, right? I mean, there are a lot of ways to communicate without words. Look is another one. When I was growing up, when I would go have dinner at my grandparents' house, if my papa, if you were acting up at the dinner table, and you looked up, and when you looked up, there was a fork pointed at you and one eyebrow raised. Now, I would show you what it looks like, but I can't do it. I can point a fork, but I can't just raise one eyebrow. And Papa wouldn't say a word. Not one word. Just point that fork and raise that eyebrow, and instantly your behavior was modified. No words were necessary. Now that we've determined that, that touch is, is a powerful thing, right? We all agree, touch is, touch is a powerful thing. So let's get back to our story here. So what was happening? Jesus was walking down the street in Jerusalem, and, and he was surrounded as, as he was when he traveled a lot of times. There were, there were people all around him, and Jesus was trying to make his way through a crowded street. And it was impossible to get through the crowd without touching somebody. Any of you ever been in a crowd like that? 
You know, you go to an amusement park or go somewhere, you can't walk through without touching or being touched by somebody. And in that crowd was a woman. And this woman was, was desperately fighting her way through the crowd in order to touch Jesus. And even if she couldn't touch Jesus, she said, that's okay if I can just touch the hem of his garment. And as soon as she did, Jesus knew. He knew somebody had touched him. He knew that the virtue in him had been transferred out to somebody else. The healing power had been transferred to somebody else. He knew it. He felt it. And the woman was healed instantly, wasn't she? If nothing else, today's message is about a God that can take a bruised and broken and, and wounded and bleeding group of people and restore them back to health and wholeness again with a simple touch. It could be an illness. It could be a job loss. It could be a death of someone that you love. A disaster, a betrayal, an addiction, anything. It could be something short-term, something that just popped up, something temporary. It could be something that's been going on for months. Or it could be something that's been going on for as long as you can remember. It doesn't matter how big it is. This God that we're talking about, He's bigger. He's bigger. So what are some of the things that you've been hoping for? What are some things in your life that you would like to see change? What is it that's been consuming your prayer life? What problems have you been trusting God to turn around in your life? Is it defeat? Discouragement? Disaster? turmoil, those aren't your final answer. The devil's trying to tell you that it is, but that's not your final answer. That's not the last chapter in your book. The last chapter is not about defeat and turmoil and disaster. So the message this morning is to keep believing, keep expecting, and keep honoring God, and guess what's going to happen? God will change your circumstances. None of you all would be here today if you didn't have at least some belief in that. Your faith brought you here today because you know that Jesus is in this place. And you came here hoping and expecting to meet him here today. Maybe you hoped or expected to meet him in a song or, or in a testimony or in a message or to feel him when you pray or to experience him in worship. But you came here to touch Jesus and to be touched by Jesus. Do you believe that? Do you have faith in that? If you do, say amen. So you believe it, and you have faith in it, right? Then why not claim it? Faith is... Is speaking words and actions that activate God's power. So let the Word of God take root in your spirit right now and begin to grow in your heart. Your job is to believe and have faith and then to act on that. Act on that faith. Your struggle has to go. Your problem has to go. And your walking around, acting like you've been defeated, has to go. Because joy is coming. Even when I don't see it, he's working. Right, Abby? Joy is coming. You have to know that that's God's wish for you. That's what our lesson teaches us today. God wants your life to be joyful. The woman in our scripture, she'd seen all kinds of experts, hadn't she? And they all said the same thing. You're never going to get better. As a matter of fact, 
you're going to get nothing but worse. But God wanted better for her, didn't he? He wanted a better life for her than the life that she had been living. And think about her condition for a moment. In that time, what did that mean for her? That affliction that she had meant that she could never have a husband. She'd never be able to hold a child. She could never hug or even touch another person. Why? Because she was an outcast and unclean. She had nobody to touch. And she had spent every penny that she had on doctors without getting any results. And now she had no money to go to the temple and pay, and she had to walk around hiding her head in the streets, concealing her identity. But God wanted something different for her, didn't he? God wanted her to be healthy and well and whole. And she heard this story. She heard about Jesus. And she heard that Jesus was coming to town. Now some of you here this morning, something inside of you told you to get out of bed this morning. It told you, get up and go to church. It's not luck or not coincidence that brought you here this morning. It's the same thing that this woman needed. You need God's favor to shine down on you and touch your life today, right now. And even though this woman was weak, and she had been losing blood and, and was weak, she still fought through the crowd to get to Jesus. She never gave up. And you should never give up either. You should be shouting out this morning, if I can only touch him, I'll be healed. Healing is coming, people. Favor is coming, and blessings and joy are coming. Believe it. God wants good for you. God doesn't want us to go around living every single moment of every day worried. Worried that we won't have enough for tomorrow. He wants us to be able to stand up and proudly sing joyfully. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand. But guess what? I know who holds tomorrow. And I know who holds my hand. See, him holding my hand, that's tough. God wants the absolute best for all of his children. Now sure, life may have thrown you a few curveballs. And maybe as you look at your future today, maybe you don't see anything good on the horizon. But that's when you stand. Firmly. When you've done all that you can do to stand, stand. Shout out, I'm not going to live discouraged. And I'm not going to live defeated. And I'm not going to keep all my focus on everything that's wrong. And never expect it to change. I'm going to stir up my faith. Because I know who's on the throne. I know that my God is bigger than any problems that I'm having. And I'm going to reach out boldly. And when you do that, guess what? He's going to touch you. Deep down, you believe that, or you wouldn't be here today. See, this woman in our story, she had faith, didn't she? She reached out and just barely touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus knew immediately. He knew that somebody touched him, and it wasn't just anybody. People had been touching him the whole time he was traveling, had they? But he knew something was different. He knew that someone touched him with expectancy. Someone had touched him and expected a miracle. And guess what? They got it, didn't they? Now, is her God any different than our God? How many of you know somebody? Know somebody personally that's experienced the touch of God in a miracle? I mean, Les has stood up and shared his testimony with us before, right? You got Bob back there that the doctor said, you ain't ever going to walk again. And 
And what they say, Beverly? No amount of prayer is going to do any good. But guess what? He's back there, ain't he? So is it your God is here and Bob's God is there? No, it's the same one, isn't it? When you left your house this morning, you were doing the very same thing this woman did. You came here wanting to get God's attention. And just like this woman, your faith can release the miracle that Jesus has in store for you. When you reach out in faith, just like this woman did, Jesus is going to feel it. And he's going to look down and he's going to address you just like he did that woman. Notice he called her daughter. She was one of his, wasn't she? So are you. So are you. It's time for some people this morning to stand up. It's time for some people to respond in faith and to recall all the times that God has been faithful in the past and trust that He will be faithful today. It's time for some people to reach out, to touch, and to be touched by Jesus. To begin living victoriously instead of defeated because God is still ready to do great things in your life starting right now. this woman's condition represents our inability to change our physical or our spiritual conditions on our own we need the touch of Jesus Amen. the woman was looking for something that the world was powerless to give her the world had no power to heal her are you looking for something this morning that the world has no power to give you See, the devil knows about the brokenness in your soul. He knows about the wounds that you have. And guess what he's doing right now? Right now, he's closing in on you. Right now, he wants to take your life and destroy your blessed assurance. He wants to wreck your future and keep you in chains. See, this woman acted in faith. She heard somewhere about Jesus. She had heard the stories about about what he had done for others, and she believed that what he had done for others, that he could also do for her. It's by the power of the touch of Jesus Christ that I am healed today. And whatever you need this morning, whatever you're struggling with this morning, I encourage you to come to Jesus. If you need to be saved this morning, come to Jesus. Receive His touch. If you have a special need in your life or or in the life of your family this morning, come to Jesus and He'll touch you. Whatever you need, come to Him. See, that woman, she could have stayed home that day. She could have stayed home when she heard Jesus was coming to town. She had plenty of reasons to be depressed and discouraged, didn't she? She'd been told that there was no help for her, that her case was hopeless, that she would never get better. She could have stayed right in her pew. She could have been standing there gripping the back of the one in front of her when she felt Jesus in that place but she made a decision. She made a decision to rise up out of the crowd, crawl if she had to, but get to Jesus. And just as she touched the hem of his garment, not his physical body, just the hem of his robe, he delivered her. People, you have to rise up. You have to call out to Jesus. You have to reach out to be healed and forgiven just by touching the hem of his garment. 
Jesus hasn't changed, has he? God hasn't changed, has he? What worked for her will work for you. This morning, you have the exact same promise that this woman said. If you but touch his clothes, you will be made whole. Faith is the meeting between your limited self and your limitless God. Stop believing that God only performed miracles in the past. That's a lie. That's a lie of the devil. Stop believing that being saved is old-fashioned. Stop believing that kneeling at his altar in prayer is out of style because that's how we come to be called sons and daughters. So whatever you're facing this morning, come to Jesus. Cry out to him. Jesus, touch me. Strengthen me. Heal me and bless me. I dare you this morning. Come and ask for his touch. Amen? Amen. May all stand, please. Amen. A woman one day